you know, before anything happens for human beings in terms of understanding, you have to define things. Definitions. So, so how is how is uh, the gentleman here who wrote this? I already forget his name, but this part too. Um, how do you def- how do you define metaverse? Yeah, he he says this. If Who's you he? Think, uh, Outlier <laughs> Ventures with <laughs> Jamie I think Burke. Name, yeah, there we go. <laughs> Jamie Burke. My I boy. always think of Jamie as from Game of Thrones, but because um, I'm rewatching it. Uh, Game of Thrones. I right. absolutely love Game of Thrones. He says, if we think of the metaverse as a far off destination, we will almost definitely sleepwalk into not addressing some fundamental design choices. However, if we believe it's important, we think of it not as a destination, but a journey or process. This is because I like that he explains that because that sounds kind of generic. It's important to acknowledge the beginning of the metaverse are already here. We are just experiencing it in 2D. So let's stop right there. Yeah, that's listen. That's what you and I were saying. Even if I put on goggles, Mm -hmm. right? Or, well, he says, if I'm looking at a graph of Bitcoin price going up and down, I'm already already experiencing the metaverse. Right. The smaller amount of the, essentially the technical, technological fabric of what makes these decentralized things tick in the two-dimensional format, he said, that's the beginning. Right. That's all. Here's my problem with this definition. It's a page long. (laughs) If I, do I go into Webster's Dictionary and one word gets a whole page? If it has multiple meanings, sure. But what this tells me here is it's not even clearly defined yet. No, I, I think it's as we go to Mars, as we're going to Mars, if we put colonies on the moon, it's the same. It's a new reality for human humanity. Yeah. I think what's what the metaverse is, is I think it becomes the reality. I think what we view as the reality is this. And I don't want to get too uh, philosophical, metaverse. but it doesn't matter what people say. No, no, this is real. Well, no, it's not. <laughs> yeah, no, no. It, I, so, What's real? It doesn't matter. So how would you and I define it? Metaverse is uh, individual humans' choice on what they say is their reality. Yes. With yeah, full yeah. control over how to shape it. Something that, something to that format. Look, one sentence, done. What's the metaverse? That's what it is. Yeah, and I, I like how he brings in the massively, uh, the MMORPG. multiplayer. Yeah, yeah. He brings that in, and then he brings in social venues and experiences. So that's a combination of those mm-hmm. become. But he says this, each exists on a spectrum with several conflicting characteristics, where the production of content is both by studios and independent creators. This is very important. Yeah. Value transfer is bi-directional, from digital to physical and physical to digital. That's the that's the important part. So Where tar- value is both transformed entirely or just represented and is both passively or actively consumed. So so much of this process is bottom up and driven by market forces and the general direction of technical innovation. So I, I want I want to stick with this physical to digital because to me that's where the line with the metaverse, that's where the line begins to blur. Yeah, correct. Because you're gonna they're gonna you're stupid to not think that people will have sex in the metaverse. Of course they're going and to. And that's gonna blur the physical you can if to the digital. Come on. They have no pun intended. If there are porn websites yes. where you can put on the, Ocu- you can put on one, Oculus goggles, they're the number one sites that people go to. If you want to see where technology is headed, you have to see how uh, the porn industry defines it. Mm-hmm. They define VHS, they define Laserdisc, they define Blu-ray, then they define online streaming. All you got to do is look at it. But but I mean, even if we look at that arena, I watched a documentary in Japan about you know like the the social. And if you're from Japan, maybe you can correct me on this because I just watched a documentary on it. But the social construct of the social construct of them not they even have places where you can go and pay to take like a thirty minute or or an hour hug with somebody. Yeah, not, not sexual, just a hug, just a hug. Because everything is becoming with anime and everything else. You know, I mean, we make the joke the forty year old virgin and all that stuff with mm-hmm. the movie, and I don't want to. I'm, I'm bringing about this because this is, I think, a controversial subject, so I think it's fun for us to talk about. Go for it. But um, when you have people that... Spend their whole world. The whole world online. Yep. It's much easier. If you're a 13-year-old boy and you have access to have sex in the metaverse, yeah, you're going to do that. That's just... It's it's our evolutionary drive to procreate. I think we asked... I, that we might have asked this to a world-leading um, psychologist about how does development work in the stance of when everything's experienced digitally? Yes. But they didn't have data on it yet. 
No. They really actually have... I, I, if they get good enough with, you know, whether it's an embedded link, you know, like... Uh, Wetware. Yeah, in your head or whatever it may be. It, it, if we can get it to the point to where it feels the same, people are going to go online. I mean, and, and those are ethical issues that you have to face and all that stuff. But, um, you know, and I always say this, at the end of the day, if it's whatever's easier for us to experience mm -hmm. dopamine hits... We're going to go in that direction. Absolutely. If you got an online casino where we're in VR yeah, goggles. Yeah, exactly. And like, you know, and I have an IV stuck in my arm that's making me feel drunk. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. While I got my goggles on, I'm like slurring my words, like trying to pull on a virtual slot machine. Well, I mean, I mean, not to get too woo-woo, but they have that little machine, you know, nowadays where, it, and I think I was talking to you about it, where they can put different chemical compositions into water. Yeah, Water and so, and then they can make that yeah. water have like a caffeine chemical composition in the water. You just set it down on it. It puts that, that those, it, it, it imprints the water with yeah. that, with caffeine. And then when you taste it, you get a little buzz. So why, why could I you just not sit on do a that? Chair yeah. That does the whole thing while I got it my makes goggles me, on. Yeah. It makes me feel drunk. Yeah. Or stimulates the part of the brain where, where, you know, people can feel drunk. Make me feel high. Make me yeah. feel like I'm having a psychotropic trip. Like anything yeah, any like that. Any of that stuff. Yeah. And I think, um. That's where that's where it's gonna happen. But there's the physical to digital, digital to physical is an interesting aspect. Mm -hmm. And I think for a, a large majority of society, we've been getting so lost in the digital. Yes. And there's been very negative effects of that because people live their lives on Instagram. Well, their experience I, is 2D, but think about the negative psychological effects it has had. Well, it, not just psychological, but he explains it here. He says, We also believe it will increasingly begin to interplay and be informed by top-down government policy around data rights, privacy, antitrust, and most importantly, financial legislation. I think that's where he's going. All, all, of course, he says, widely, it's going to vary widely around the globe. Yeah, he, well, Jamie, that is if people don't choose to adopt the standard. Yes. If everyone has agreed to say that, okay, we can give up some piece of paper, money, to give me some sort of object. Right. Everybody can readily adopt Tartle. I can work and receive something in return that's tangible financial gain. I don't need the legislation to define for me what that is. I'm already taking my rights over something I naturally own. I don't need a top-down approach. You can't, this, what's contradicting about this is the fact that he says the metaverse will have all these top-down regulations. Yes, yes. But you're saying the metaverse has to be user-centric. Mm -hmm. Web 3.0 is all about the person writing to the internet. Yes, not the internet writing into them. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah, and he goes into the, when he talks about the physical and digital, he talks about an economy and he says Amazon is basically the hybrid of the two. I mean, you could see this. This is, all of this is happening right now. You know, I mean, Amazon, yeah, we have big warehouses here in Albuquerque. Mm -hmm. They just built. That's physical. It's monster. You have, uh, we have Amazon <laughs> trucks running around delivering packages constantly. That's physical. But Amazon's stream of video. But everything you purchase is digital. You go on, it's a digital economy. Yeah, I know. You go on, everything transacted is digitally happened. There's no paper. Someone's not sho What's not a physical Someone's not shoving dollar bills into their iPad to like do the Amazon no, purchase. and Amazon doesn't have like a Costco where you come in no. and you can shop physically. It's a virtual mall. That's all it is. Yes. You know, and there's, it's a path of least resistance. And we will find benefits as human beings to using this. There will be areas where the metaverse will be so appropriate. And there'll be other places where it's like, why are we doing it like that? But it takes time. And what I can tell you right now is it's still so young in the definition of what it is because yes. of look how large this definition is. It takes over a whole page just to define something. It tells me that the thought hasn't been taken, it hasn't been refined enough. Well, no, because I think we're in the beginning stages. And the only thing they have, and he talks about this, he said it could be considered partially true. Some game platforms are so big they are closed microeconomies with their own currencies, which they control centrally in value systems, like experience point systems. In game items, skins, which are like NFTs, guys, yeah, Fortnite. and marketplaces where significant amounts of the wealth are held and traded. I remember... Um in the, in the early days of skins, you had to hit certain achievements in the game to unlock yes, certain Yeah, things. exactly. Now it got to the point is, do you have the money to pay for it? So the game designers have gone from the fact of, let's just sell the game for free and make the money off the NFTs. Mm -hmm. Okay. I remember, I'm, I'm pretty damn good at Mario Kart. So I got the golden Mario, the golden cart, golden kite, golden wheels, all that stuff. You know, 
But that took me time to put that in there. There was a level of work to it. But now when you move that away and you say, why don't you just pay money to get what you want? Mm, it creates yes. this new little micro economy. The streams, the way people actually pay for the stuff, it's like it's a new version of the freemium, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Here's all the free. And I think Candy Crush was a leader in this. Mm -hmm. You can play this new type of Bejeweled, but if you want to like accelerate faster for what reason <laughs> i have no idea you can pay into it yes yeah you're essentially well, paying a company to help stimulate your dopamine hits right and then throwing ads in there or whatever that was the old school way he says this defining characters of a true metaverse is that it needs its own economy and currencies native to it where value can be earned spent lent borrowed or invested interchangeably in both a physical or virtual sense and most importantly without the need for a government so this is this is that <laughs> this is turtle right here. i can jive with that you're talking about turtle yeah turtle and it's in the back end we have a you could call it a cryptocurrency but on the back end we have an accounting ledger that has to be there we use that in a decentralized format to write to many chains in a block lattice structure right so that we can remove any sort of centralized authority in that in maintaining the value transfer. Right. But that money that is earned is real U.S. dollar that gets spent inside and outside of the system. Yes. But the fabric that allows the U.S. dollar to work is a decentralized Web 3 4.0 fabric. Yeah, and I, and I think that that creates it. Okay, the, the U.S. dollar, that fiat currency, brings it back to the physical. That it so, has to. so you have you that. have to, you have to have a bridge back yes. to reality. Yes. If your new metaverse thing does not have that bridge, it's not meta because the meta is the blending of both of these things. If it's not clear how they've come together, there's an issue. Yeah, and and he gets into like closed systems like you know Oculus and Facebook, you know because uh, Facebook owns Oculus, and then there's de these decentralized land and all these decentralized ones. But he says this, and I think this is important. He he talks about property and he talks about a closed economy and he says or whether they allow transferability of value outside their ecosystem how that interacts with fiat based systems and to what extent they do or don't control the monetary and fiscal policy of the underlying economy itself furthermore there's also another technical and philosophical distinction between visions and emergent actualities and metaverse which could be described as a lo-fi to hi-fi there are platforms that really push the technical boundaries of the experience through both software and hardware hardware requirements like oculus and those that design for the lowest possible device and bandwidth requirements for universal access. And that that's where we take more of the lo-fi approach with Tartle. We because have to. We, we, we want everybody all, you know, I mean, there's going to be, what, nine and a half billion people before it tailors down, they said? They're all going to be on. They're, they all, we need everyone on Tartle. So, yeah. because that that is humanity in and of itself, bettering itself, and moving to that next. It takes so long to build out infrastructures to even manage someone that wants to be streaming live <clears throat> via Oculus. Yeah, yeah. That requires a developed country's infrastructure. Yeah. So you have to work with things that are developing. Yeah. And and those I, developing things, they it has to be lo-fi. Well, I like you said, transferability of value outside their ecosystems. And, and, and that's something... What's the biggest <laughs> transfer value? Okay. I'm going to go on Tartle, this digital thing, create these new digital assets essentially data packets, which are all NFTs in themselves. I'm going to get paid for doing so. I'm going to own it. I'm going to share it. I get real money in return, which I have the ability to spend in the real world. And then the person acquiring that digital asset can then go make business decisions or do research or what have you that has real tangible yes. physical benefits for yes. society. I could not think of a more balanced, more perfect, and more beautiful application of a metaverse. Yes. It's not just because we run the company. Just from listening to how they're defining this and where they see holes, we fix those holes. Yeah, and he gets into this. This is very important because he says, it is our belief and the thesis of this paper. So this is this is really important. He's, he's coming off the bat in like page three. Mm -hmm. That with time, the one thing we don't answer is how long an open metaverse built on shared open source protocols, open infrastructure, and a single unifying yet open financial system will erode or eat and potentially replace closed platforms due to powerful network effects. Leaving the only remaining distinction between virtual worlds if they are lo-fi or hi-fi. The final point is important and something that we believe we as an industry should always maintain in order to be as inclusive as possible and onboard as many people out of the old economy into the open metaverse. That's what so, we're doing. So that, that's what we're doing. By taking that lo-fi approach yes. and, and making it accessible to billions of people. That can be easily understood. Yes. And you don't have to have a shitload of technology up front to be able to adopt it. Yes. That's the best way to do it. 
You have to meet people where they are. Yeah, constantly. So we, we, we've we been talking about the metaverse, Turtle metaverse. If somebody wants to sign up for Turtle, how, how simple is it and how many seconds does it take? You get your lo-fi phone, <laughs> tablet, computer. I don't even care if you go to an internet cafe, okay? You go to turtle.co, T-A-R-T-L-E dot C-O. Loads super quick. Very simple, okay? It doesn't need to be crazy. It doesn't have to have big moving videos and everything. All we want to do is get you very low friction to adopt a tool that financially empowers you, one that respects your human rights, okay? And you go to turtle.co and you're going to click on a button that says get started. There's no confusion. It's right there in front of you and you're going to sign up. And in under a minute's time, you're going to be on your way to populating data assets that will create annuities for you far into the future. In this digital world where something of a digital technology has a real direct fundamental emancipating empowering benefit for you here in your life at this moment. Mm-hmm.